Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship this morning. We're so glad that you're with us uh, today. Uh, well, I'm, I'm loaning it. Uh, Pastor Tyner uh, is in Fredericksburg. He did a wedding yesterday, so uh, he will be uh, with us again on Monday and next week. Um, this week is an awesome week as we start a new series. Uh, we're going to be a new series called Foundations as we look at how uh, God is in our lives. Today we'll be looking at how God is in the church. Uh, and then uh, throughout the rest of the series, we're going to be looking at things like uh, how is God in our money? How is God in our marriages? How is God in our work? Uh, and basically just looking at our aspects of our lives of, of how is God the foundation of our lives. Um, so this morning, as we begin, uh, let us rise and greet those around us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities, which I have.
Upon this your confession, I, as a called, ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty and everlasting God, who govern all things in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the prayers of your people and grant us your peace through all our days. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading this morning comes from Isaiah chapter 54, verses 10 through 17. For the mountains may depart and the hills be removed, but my steadfast love shall not depart from you, and my covenant of peace shall not be removed, says the Lord who has compassion on you. O afflicted one, storm-tossed and not comforted, behold, I will set your stones in antimony and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your pinnacles of agate, your gates of carbuncles, and all your wall of precious stones. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. If anyone stirs up strife, it is not from me. Whoever stirs up strife with you shall fall because of you. Behold, I have created the smith who blows the fire of coals and produces a weapon for its purpose. I have also created the ravager to destroy. No weapon that is fashioned against you shall succeed, and you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord and their vindication from me, declares the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Be God. The epistle reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building upon it. 
Let each one take care how he builds upon it. For no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it, but it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built up on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Do you not know that you are God's temple and that God's spirit dwells in you? If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. This is the word of the Lord. We rise as we are able for the reading of the gospel. <coughs> the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the seventh chapter. Everyone then who hears those words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the wind blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had a foundation on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does uh, not do them will be like a foolish man who builds his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell, and the uh, great was the fall of it. And when Jesus finished, these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as one of their scribes. This is the gospel of our Lord. You, you may be seated. At this time, we invite all the children to come up for a children's message. Okay, we can go down here. Okay, we're gonna try this. Those, be careful. Okay, right here. 
couple more. Okay. Tell you what, let me move these back. I'll stand over here. Okay. You know what these are? You've got them at your house. What are these? Lincoln Logs. Okay, they're the off-brand of Lincoln Logs, but they are Lincoln Logs. Lincoln Logs are expensive. <laughs> All right. We're going to try something here. I have, what's in here? Water. I've always wanted to do this. We'll see if this works. You think I could build a house on the water? Lincoln logs float, so hopefully they do. Let's give it a shot. Oh, not bad. Uh-oh. Start start putting that second one on there. It gets heavy, doesn't it? Let's see. I'm gonna, it's floating. I don't know if the cameras can catch this or not, but it is floating. Okay. Why is it not a good idea to build a house on on water? Yeah, it'd be fall down. It'll sink. But here we can put the little top on. Oh, yeah, it totally sinks, right? It doesn't have a good foundation. What would be a better thing to put it on? It is touching the ground. Yeah. What would be a better thing? Building it on land. Okay. We're going to move this over here. Do a little bit. Right? That would be better, right? All right. Our Bible reading that we just read talks about how Jesus tells us we should build our lives on what? On, on Jesus. Yeah. It'll eventually get to Jesus, right? And he says on a rock. And Jesus is that rock, right? So it's important. Just like building a little Lincoln Log house, we want to build it on something solid. We don't want to build it on something that's not uh, Jesus, right? We want it to be strong. All right, would you guys pray with me? Dear Jesus, thank you for being our foundation. Help us to follow you. Amen. Okay, you may be go sit back down.
Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to you, our Lord, our Rock, our Redeemer. Amen. All right, uh, I want you to imagine for a second, uh, you are in a room uh, full of people from all over the world. Uh, they're uh, Hindus, Muslims, there are uh, people uh, from every tribe, every uh, religion, every denomination. Uh, they're all in this big room, and you get to be the person that stands up and tells everybody about what it means to be a Lutheran. Okay, you don't really have to stand up, so don't have any uh, panic attacks. But I want you to just, you get to be the one that describes what it means to be a Lutheran. So what would you say? What would be the characteristics of what it means to be a Lutheran? Okay, don't jump to the point yet. Gosh. You know, I knew somebody was going to do that. It was going to say, Jesus Christ, we go straight there. Be done with the message. Uh, look, there's no communion. We're not on a time crunch today. Um, okay, so let me take this at a different angle. This uh, exercise was done uh, at, a, uh, at a seminary. It was not, not a Lutheran seminary, but um, I was reading in a book about this author went in to a classroom and he starts asking all these people, what does it mean to be a Christian? So I kind of did, what does it mean to be a Lutheran? Okay, so here are the ones that I came up with. Let's, let's put up the next slide. Uh, you got to have Luther, right? You got to talk to everybody about Luther, right? I mean, he's got, if you miss Luther, you miss the whole thing of what it means to be a Lutheran, right? Uh, faith alone, uh, grace alone, a scriptoria alone, right? You got to have those three um, in, with, and under, right? That's, does anybody remember that from confirmation? Come on. So, okay, those people that did not raise their hand, I will see you in confirmation class in a couple, what, 20 minutes or so? Okay? In, with, and under, that, that was how Luther described what's going on in the sacrament of what? Holy Communion, right? He basically had no idea what he was talking about, right? So he said, it's the body, it's the blood, it, it's but it's also still bread and wine all at the same time, and he didn't get it. So that's what he came up with, right? So you got the sacraments, right? Uh, anybody have heard of the Book of Concord? Okay, good. Much better. Um, right, that's that big book that uh, all the teachers, pastors, DCEs, we subscribe to. That is our core belief, right? These are the, the things. And, and we could also talk even here in the United States, right? I mean, you got to have the organ, uh, you got to have a church building, or maybe you're not a church, right? Um, uh, we can talk about what, what has to be on the altar. I mean, there's all these little things, but when it all boils down to what are we forgetting? Jesus Christ, right? Uh, and so in this experiment that this guy had did in a seminary class, they got through the whole list and they forgot the most important thing. Uh, how often in our lives do we get worried about all the other stuff and we forget about Jesus? We forget about the core, the most important thing. Uh, even here in the church, we can occasionally be more worried about all the other stuff and we forget about who Jesus is. Uh, that's kind of why we've uh, uh, started this uh, series, this series called Foundations, and looking at how Jesus is our foundation in every aspect of our lives, uh, and how often we sometimes forget this. Uh, great example, I remember uh, we were uh, we were living in the spring area, and uh, I had just walked out of H-E-B, the one on, uh, I think it was Kirkendall Wa Road, uh, and I had a nice uh, pack of adult beverages with me, and uh, I'm walking out to my truck, uh, about ready to put it in. This guy comes up. I, I already could tell he was going to be trouble. He had his little Bible in his hand, um, <clears throat> and uh, 
I know the guy meant well, but he started going off on me how I should not be having that frosty beverage and how that was a sin. He didn't know who he was talking to, by the way. So, um, <coughs> I, I just laid it to him. I knew my doctrine better than he did. I called him every heresy that I could. I started just laying it out of how he just missed the whole boat, uh, that whole water into wine thing, you know, Jesus. Um, but looking back at that, the guy missed something. He talked about all about the law, and he missed Jesus. I mean, wouldn't it have been better to come up and say, hey, do you know Jesus? Yeah. Shaking your head. Yeah. What about Jesus? How often do we get into a conversation, and sometimes it's with somebody in the church or somebody, maybe it's somebody outside that's never heard, and we are not talking about Jesus. We love to list out all the things that we believe. We love to list out all the, the, the hatred uh, or the, the, the things that we see wrong with everybody else, but we forget about Jesus. I have one other story that uh, uh, proves this point. Uh, in seminary, we were asked to go uh, with a group. We went into uh, the homosexual or the gay pride uh, parade and be a part of their festivities. We were there. And uh, we didn't go in <coughs> denying who we were, but we went in, and all we did was we asked him, do you know Jesus? And we spent hours there, going up and down, meeting people, writing, uh, just kind of taking surveys and talking with them. Um, we had the best conversations they were eager to hear about Jesus. We were even handing them, um, basically, I think we were doing the book of John. We were giving them the book of John. Take it, read it, learn about Jesus. They were hungry for it. Some of them knew who he was, some didn't. But they were hungry for it. And that all shut down uh, in the afternoon. We, uh, there was a group standing outside yelling, Things that you didn't want to hear anybody else to hear. Holding up crosses, holding up Bibles. They were just, they were listing out the law. And it shuts our conversations down to a point where we felt our lives could, it could get nasty and we just left. Do we lead with Jesus? Do we is Jesus at the center? The reality is, if each and every one of us, if we were condemned by the law, we wouldn't be standing here. If we had to follow every regulation that God set before us, we would be condemned. I, I'm sure everybody in this room, we're all adulterers. We're all uh, we're all greedy to some degree. We've stolen. We've worshipped other gods. Uh, we've gone astray. We're all in that boat. What's the most important thing? Jesus. See, at the heart of the church should be Jesus. Because in him we have forgiveness of sin. In him we have the cross. In him we have his death and his resurrection where he's <coughs> taken our sins and made us clean. It's in Jesus that we're able to stand. It's in Jesus that we are able to have uh, life eternal. All the other stuff is just fluff. Uh, I'm not saying all of them are not important. It's like building a house, right? You get a house. You have this, you, you first, what are you supposed to do if you build a house? I know there are some of you building houses in here. Okay, the foundation. Even before that, you're supposed to clear the land, right? You can't put a foundation there if there's a stump there, right? You got to move it. 
right? That's the, all the Old Testament, right? They're going through and they're telling us what's going on and they're cleaning it out to get it ready. And then you pour your foundation. That's Jesus, right? That's the, the gospel. And then we're living in this extra part of the time, right? This is the building of the walls. Maybe you're putting in some nice backsplashes, right? Or maybe paint. All those other things are just the structure, but it all sits on one thing. It sits on Jesus. He's the linchpin. He's the uh, thing that holds it all together. Without him, there's nothing. I mean, think about it. If, if Jesus did not exist in Christianity, it would not exist. He's at the bottom. Our, it's only in him that we find ability to stand. And that, that is on that one promise. That he claimed us. That he renewed us. That he paid for your sins. So that the law didn't matter. Uh, that law would not condemn you. The law would not crush you. It is in Him that we find hope. It's in Him that we find stability. Our foundation is in Christ. And over this next uh, uh, couple weeks as we go through this, I, I encourage you, uh, especially people that may need to hear it, uh, we're going to be talking about some hard conversations. How is Jesus the center of your finances? How is Jesus at the center of your job or your workplace? How is how's Jesus at the center of your marriage? How is Jesus at the center of your family? We sometimes don't answer these questions because we like to put them off to the side, but what we want to look at is how is Jesus? How is that solid rock of grace and foundation for everything that we do? Jesus is our true foundation. <coughs> Amen. Now may the grace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until he comes again. Amen. At this time, we rise uh, for our confession of our faith. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He is in heaven. The third day he rose again. He ascended into sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life, and the life of the life. Amen. Got a couple quick announcements of things that we want to pray for this week, especially. Uh, one, we'll continue to be praying for our new series, Foundations, as we go through that. And we pray for those uh, people who, uh, that need to be here, that, that, want to, uh, that God needs uh, them to hear. Uh, we also are going to be starting to pray for some of our summer events. Uh, first one we will be starting to pray for is uh, uh, our Camp Lone Star uh, registration for uh, those going to camp uh, uh, in the morning. Uh, there's, I think, some more information in Northex and in your bulletin. Uh, and for more details, I call the church office. Uh, we'll continually be praying for our junior high and senior high. Uh, everything is still going on as normal, but uh, we still want to be praying for them as uh, they're in this transition uh, with uh, Carl leaving. Uh, we also want to pray for our grief share group. Uh, they're starting back up. Uh, for people that uh, are struggling uh, with uh, having a loss uh, in the family, uh, uh, pray for them. 
Let us go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we uh, thank you for uh, your Son, Jesus Christ, uh, for being our foundation, for being uh, the rock uh, that we stand on. Uh, Lord, uh, we ask that you lift up uh, uh, the ministries uh, of this church. Uh, be with those that, uh, uh, all, that lead those groups. Uh, Lord, we ask uh, uh, that you bless uh, our endeavors with our junior high and senior high uh, youth groups as uh, they go on. Uh, be with them as they uh, uh, still struggle uh, with the loss of Carl, but also are uh, 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 growing in their faith. Uh, Lord, we ask uh, that you be with uh, the Grief Share group as they start again. Uh, Lord, uh, comfort uh, those that come uh, and give them uh, your healing peace on them. Uh, Lord, we also want to ask that you stir up hearts of those uh, uh, that need to be there. Uh, those that uh, may have uh, struggled or lost, uh, that they could benefit from that, Lord. Uh, we ask that uh, you, you call them uh, and bring them uh, uh, to that uh, group. Uh, Lord, uh, we start to pray for uh, Camp Lone Star as they prepare this uh, for the summer, uh, be with all our kids that are uh, considering going, uh, continually watch over them. Lord, we also uh, lift up our uh, new sermon series. Be with our, uh, through our sermon series of foundation, uh, as you are our foundation, Lord. Uh, Lord, we lift up other ministries. We lift up uh, Beautiful Savior in Arlington, Texas, and Alaska Missions for Christ in Alaska. Uh, be with them as they proclaim uh, your message to those around them. Uh, Lord, we give you great thanks uh, for Drew Gakey and Emily Schultz as they were married yesterday in Fredericksburg. Uh, be with them and enrich their marriage. Uh, Lord, we lift up uh, those that are celebrating birthdays for uh, Maddie, for uh, Claudia. Uh, be with them as they celebrate this time of joy. Uh, Lord, uh, we give you uh, thanks for the faith uh, that you have given those that have passed. Uh, we thank you uh, for the faith of Joe Nimps and for uh, Aldrea Polk uh, who passed away. Uh, Lord, be with uh, their families as they uh, mourn uh, the lure losses. Uh, give them comfort in uh, the hope and the joy that they have, uh, knowing that they will see their loved ones again uh, in the faith that we have in you. Lord, we lift up those that are sick or hospitalized, those that are struggling. Uh, Lord, uh, be with uh, Debbie Berger's mother-in-law, or mother, uh, she fell and broke her hip. Uh, be with uh, Frances uh, Peraski as uh, she is in uh, St. Mark's Hospital. Uh, Lord, we also lift up uh, Edna, for Dot, uh, for Dwight, for uh, uh, Amanda, for Tom, for James, for Joyce, for Christina, for Joshua, for Thelma, for Bryce, for Aldwin, for Dana, for Eddie and Dana. Uh, be with them uh, as they uh, uh, need your healing hand. Lord, we lift up all these things and all the things in our hearts and minds to you, trusting in you. In your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we collect our offerings.
We pray the prayer that our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. 